Hi, and welcome to the Post-Acute Point of View, our discussion hub for healthcare technology in the out-of-hospital space. Here we talk about the latest news and views on trends and innovation that can impact the way post-acute care providers work. And we take a look at how technology can make a difference in today's changing healthcare landscape in both home-based and facility-based care organizations and the lives of the people they serve. Today, we hear from Naveen Gupta, Senior Vice President of Home and Hospice Division for Matrix Care, and his special guest. Let's dive in. My name is Naveen Gupta. I am the Senior Vice President and Division Head for the Home and Hospice Division here at Matrix Care. Welcome again to another episode of the Post-Acute Point of View. We have really a great podcast that we will be covering today. I am joined by Jill Litwin. Jill is a key account executive at SureScript, and you know, in her role, she promotes various products and technology solutions to EHR companies, all of which are designed to assist care providers in making the right clinical decisions at the point of care. And Jill is the registered pharmacist and has spent a large majority of her career in long-term care pharmacy operations and general management roles for Omnicare. And she is passionate about technology in the long-term and post-acute segment, and she brings extensive experience and clinical expertise to her role. Welcome, Jill. Thank you, Naveen. And I'm also joined by Rachel Peterson. She is a manager of product innovation, medication history, and PDMP at Shaw Scripts. She oversees a part of the portfolio of products, including medication history for reconciliation and medication history for populations. All of these solutions, they bring actionable intelligence to prescribers and care managers driving medication therapy decisions, best, you know, really helping the patients there. And Rachel has over 15 years of experience in software development product management in multiple industries, including healthcare, agriculture, retail, and hospitality. Rachel, we're we're really excited to have you as well. Welcome. Thank you. So what we often do in these podcasts are we are very curious to sort of explore the origin story of our guests. And if you, many of our listeners, as you've listened to these podcast series, we've always, we're just curious about how did folks really get into this space? What does that personal journey look like? So Jill, I want to begin with you, maybe just sharing a little bit what helped you gravitate towards particular space, long-term care space and particular pharmacy. Sure. So one of the experiences that influenced me at a very early age was actually when I was a teenager and my grandmother came to live with us due to her declining health and her inability to live independently. And she had multiple chronic disease states, hypertension, diabetes, and she was actually complicated by diabetic retinopathy. So she was on a lot of medications and of course she couldn't see well. So I was enrolled to help her fill her pill boxes every week. And at that time, of course, I didn't know what these medications were. Mm -hmm. So it was more of a patterned approach, of course, of, you know, one pink pill, one blue pill and, and five, you know, various white pills. But what I knew was very important. She had the right medications at the right time of day every day. And I knew what I was providing her was valuable to her. So flash forward. I go to pharmacy school, and when I graduated, I quickly gravitated toward long-term care pharmacy. And as you mentioned prior, I spent years at Omnicare in clinical, then operations and leadership roles. And during those years, we saw many advances in medication management and various distribution systems, but we continued to rely on very manual processes, including the exchange of, of paper documents and lots and lots of phone calls to get valuable medication information on patients. And mm-hmm. so when I saw this position at SureScripts five years ago, I recognized this opportunity to use my experiences in long-term care, some of the problems and opportunities that I saw when I would be out at facilities and that I saw from a pharmacy provider side for an opportunity to progress technology in our long-term post-acute care segment. And I have found it very rewarding to see what we do at SureScript and the products and solutions that we have brought to clinicians in this segment. Jill, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. You know, oftentimes you wonder how did folks really get into this space? I mean, you know, what sort of steered you? So just even hearing your personal story about your grandmother and your role that you played even in those early years and and then having a passion then to really 
you know, pursue your calling in one sense. So it's really very exciting. Rachel, you know, looking at your background, certainly you've got a technologist background. You've worked in multiple industries. Talk to us a little bit about how did you get to healthcare? Yeah, so coming into healthcare was certainly not something I really saw for myself. I've always been curious. And I actually pursued an engineering track, like you mentioned, technologists. As a kid, I lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And when we would have visitors come to see us, one of the things we always did was we went to Miller, Miller Brewing. And I loved watching the bottling plants, my favorite part of the tour every time. And as a kid, I decided that's what I want to do. I want to design manufacturing lines. And so I went to engineering school. And like many engineers, when they graduate, I ended up being a coder. So I started working in technology and building out reports for manufacturing companies to ensure that they had enough stock and enough inventory to continue operations. So it's really not technology, healthcare technology were really not in my plans, but I ended up actually, after I started working for a consulting company that did reporting for manufacturing companies, I was assigned to a long-term care independent living, assisted living SNF company, which is Classic Residence by Hyatt, now V. And that really introduced me to long-term post-acute care and healthcare in general. And I was still working in the technology department, but really what I was doing there was pulling together all of the data that we had in all sorts of different systems to really bring together company dashboards and analytics to help drive the business and most importantly to help drive the healthcare piece. Mm -hmm. So that's really how I came my first taste of healthcare and, and healthcare technology. And it's so exciting. And what I would say for now is um, when I saw the SureScripts opportunity similar to Jill, I saw the impact and I saw mm -hmm. the, the amount of data that SureScripts processes and then really how that data can be transformed and used to drive better health outcomes. And so it was a no brainer for me to apply. And, and here I am five years later as well. I think Jill, we started two weeks apart, if I remember right. Yes. <laughs> so that's great, Rachel. You know, I firmly believe cross-pollination of industry experience and expertise really adds tremendous value. If you look at healthcare, healthcare remains very fragmented, very expensive. You've got other industries that have accelerated over the last many years and healthcare still lags in one sense. So just having folks entering into long-term care space with good technology backgrounds and they've used the skills and expertise in different segments, I think is only a win-win. So I think that's great. Thank you very much for sharing a little bit about your background as well. So we are very excited about our partnership relationship with SureScripts and Certainly, the brand is very well known. Jill, I'd love to just begin by get, getting your sort of thoughts on Shaw Scripts, the Shaw Scripts Network Alliance. Often case, when a new organization is birthed, it's rooted in solving a problem that many organizations see, many people see, but it requires someone to jump in and say, I'm going to do something about it. So talk to us a little bit about the genesis of Shaw Scripts and the Network Alliance. Sure. So SureScripts is the largest health information network in the United States, and we actually just celebrated our 20th birthday. Our foundational product was e-prescribing, and many have referred to us as the pipes behind healthcare. So we move data. And what we have done over the last 20 years is we have built these connections that have allowed the exchange of healthcare information between our network constituents. And so what we really do is the problem we solve is we help clinicians make informed decisions by putting data into their hands, whether it be medication data or clinical history data on a patient. So we simply connect all of healthcare. The Network Alliance itself really refers to that collective power of these partnerships. And the Alliance connects virtually every electronic health record provider, every PBM, pharmacies, clinicians, health plans, long-term and post-care organizations, and most recently, we are connecting specialty hubs and specialty pharmacy organizations. And a couple of fun facts um, that I always find amazing, when I do a business review with our clients every year, I always say your value increases because as we add new participants to our network, we're able to bring you more data. It's as simple as that. So a couple of fun facts that were in our 
our 2020 report is through our alliance and our partnerships, we have connected over 2 million healthcare professionals and organizations, and we have 342 million patients in our master patient index. And that represents 98% of the US population. So it's amazing what we can do given our reach and our connectivity. Now that's certainly great statistics. I don't think I was aware. I, I knew it was very high double digits. I didn't really have an appreciation for sort of the breadth and depth of the, of the network there. So thank you, Jill, for all that. Let's talk about you know, a big problem with just being able to reconcile medications. What is the problem when we're solving for medication import? How big is the problem and how, how does the solution help clinicians? So if they did not have access to the solution, what would they be doing? Sure. So the solution that we're talking about and the opportunity here is, of course, getting that medication history information on a patient. And again, the problem is obtaining a comprehensive list of medications for a patient which in our segment is critically important because many of our patients go through transitions of care throughout their lifetime. So without this type of product, what we see, especially in a home health type of environment, is that the home health provider goes out and meets with the patient during intake and simply has to collect all this information manually from the patient. And this includes talking to the patient, a lot of times going through their prescription vials, talking to family members, or reaching out to providers. And as we know, in many cases, this information is incomplete. If a patient decides they want to discontinue a medication because they didn't like a side effect, mm -hmm. they stopped due to cost, um, we're not going to collect all that information we need in order to effectively treat this patient. And as we know, when they have an acute incident, they go to the hospital. Oftentimes, they're going to come out discharged with a different medication list or medications than they have in their home. So, the additional larger problems that result, of course, are errors of admission, duplicate medications, drug interactions, all of which, of course, can contribute to that larger adverse health event episode. So the SureScript solution, the SureScript's medication history for reconciliation product provides that care provider with that comprehensive list of medications. And the best use case scenario we see is before that home health provider goes out and meets with a patient, they will query through the SureScripts network and receive that complete medication, 12 months worth of data on that patient. And the nice thing is, is this is integrated into the technology, into the EHR. So it's a very easy solution and they get the results within seconds. So it's real time. So it's time savings, it's comprehensive, and then they can reconcile a course with the patient and use that opportunity to go through those medications with the patients. And of course, as we know, med reconciliation has been recognized as a key strategy for addressing medication discrepancies and ensuring patient safety, especially with transitions of care. I think you said it well. You know, I think medication is so critically important to quality outcomes and preventing adverse events. So where you can reduce human error, right? And and as you said, you know, duplication of data, manual effort. I know we were at the Home Care 100 you know, a couple of weeks ago huge home health hospice conference, a lot of really great strategic thinkers, providers there. The conversation around, you know, major trends our industry is facing, both in terms of headwinds and tailwinds. Certainly the headwinds, it was, it was almost unanimous, was this issue of labor, right? And being able to, does technology have a role to play for the caregiver shortage the industry is facing? So Joe, I, I'm just going to pick your brain. If without the solution, and this is done manually, what is the efficiency? Is it how much time are providers saving for a clinician at the point of care when you're importing all of this medication? Yeah, I think reducing error is one part of it. The second part yeah. of it is getting efficiency. Yeah. What does that really look like? Yes, we have seen on average 45-minute reduction in time. Again, there's a real-time request response. Information comes within seconds as far as collecting data. The manual processes can take up to 45 minutes to collect that data. And that's just the collection spot right. um, versus if you have to go beyond that and do the reconciliation, the verification. But absolutely, especially in this, you know, labor's always been, you know, a problem in, in long-term post-acute care. But obviously with COVID, it enhanced that problem. And it's, as you mentioned, one of the number one problems right now for our long-term post-acute care customers. And of course, that corresponds directly to a cost savings yes. of that, you know, 
that care provider. So it's an impactful solution. We have had great user experiences and stories based on the ease of use and the amount of information that comes with this product. That's great. You know, I, I think it's about, yes, cost optimization. It's about risk management and it's about workflow efficiency as we think about our industry. And so I think the solution really hits on, on all three. Another thing that I'd like to add is it really does reduce burnout because it changes that conversation from an exploration of what data or what medications are you taking to, if you're at that home health visit, checking against the pill bottles themselves and becomes a validation and just a checkbox. So it's a lot less strenuous and a lot more opportunity to have patient care time versus mm -hmm. that manual step of, of entering data. There's definitely benefit there too. So not only does it improve the amount of time that a caregiver is with the patient, but it also makes their time better spent in doing the things they want to do, which is talking to the patient, caring for the patient. Yeah, well, well said, Rachel. You know, oftentimes we say, you know, when the clinician, they go to, they go to school, they're passionate about care delivery and not so much about working with the technology piece and entering all of this data and input that's there. If we can remove some of that burden, it goes a really long way in, in helping them really help patients and what they're really passionate about. So that's a very good point. So Rachel, to that, I want to pivot a little bit and talk about technology and innovation. So when you look at the platform, what are some of the other use cases the platform broadly solves for? And from your perspective, what does that future look like? Are there still friction in the system that needs to be addressed and improved? We'd love to just see how do you see the evolution of what uh, solution that we just described and talked about? Where do we go from here? Sure. So medication history is really a treatment-based use case. So as Jill mentioned, you're face-to-face -face with the patient, you're validating their medications, you're trying to avoid interactions, you want to make sure you continue therapy appropriately if therapy has changed or shifted that you are adhering to those treatments. And from our use case, like what does the future look like? It's continuing to provide not only the what, so what medications is that patient taking, yeah. but why? So why were they prescribed a cholesterol medication? And one of the things that we continuously hear is if I could understand the, the thought process, it would really help in my clinical decision-making. And so those are the kinds of problems that we're, we're looking at now. Data quality and completeness and accuracy and all of those things are also still very key. Mm -hmm. um, we do have, as, as Jill mentioned, as a new partner joins the Network Alliance, that brings new data. And the new data allows for better decisions, but it may also at times be duplicative. And so how are we going to ensure that what we're providing is the most useful and, and the best clinical decision-making data available. So in terms of that, that's what we're broadly solving for. That's helpful. I, I like the emphasis on not just the, the way you put it, right? So the why behind it, it's not just the what in terms of the medications, but why, mm -hmm. and, and really essentially being able to improve the data quality to drive better clinical outcomes, essentially for the decisions that are to be made there. I think Jill, you said that you're virtually connected to all of the EHRs. Mm -hmm. And you know, so from a provider perspective, when a provider is really looking to make a choice of EHR selection, there must be some criteria. How much of a role should the integrations and interoperability play? Are there considerations to be thought through? And we talked about labor, how labor is really important. The richness of the interoperability integration with, with the EHRs for, for your platform, what are some of the considerations that providers should be looking at when making EHR decisions, thinking through integrations with a platform such as yours? Sure. So in terms of the EHR selection, integration and being able to pull data from multiple sources is really key because that data adds to your patient chart. It allows your providers to have all of that information when they're treating a patient. It helps provide history. I think Jill mentioned, but patients are terrible historians. And yeah. so if you can have that ability to pull in data from other places, you're more likely to ensure that you have the full picture. 
And so if you're looking at an EHR that doesn't contain integrations and doesn't have interoperability that providers are quite frankly accustomed to at this point, you're going to add time because you're going to be doing more faxing, you're going to be doing more phone calls, or you're going to have an incomplete picture of the patient. Yes. And so those integrations are really key, especially as you mentioned with labor, if you have to hire people that are going to you know, process faxes or call offices and, and do all of that work manually, you're going to have issues when it comes to maintaining that labor force and ensuring that they're, they're properly utilized. Yeah, Rachel, I think that's right. You know, in, in one sense, I, I see that as almost the, the minimum to play, right? So the ability to have the richness of the integration there, but there are also opportunities to sort of co-create and keep pushing the boundaries on workflows and workflow efficiencies and what we can do. Again, all of that working towards either reducing risk, driving efficiency, as you said best, allowing caregivers to provide better care at the point of care, maybe also even just working with partners to keep shaping the standards. So we talk a lot about FHIR and 360X, and there's a num- numerous standards that continue to evolve, participating in, in all of that to make sure, to your point, that we are creating a rich, interconnected ecosystem. And just the network that Shaw Scripts has built really is powering and enabling a lot of these medication workflows, which I think is really amazing. So I want to really thank you, Jill and Rachel, for time today. I know for Matrix Care to partner with an incredible organization such as yours and who's leading, who's committed to enabling better care and enabling providers and clinicians have data at their fingertips so that they can make the right decisions. It's really great that we can have this conversation and it can inform our audience about, you know, really taking advantage of all of these tools and platforms that are available at the end of the day to help really help patients drive a better outcome. So thank you very much, Jill and Rachel, for the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. That concludes the latest episode of the Post-Acute Point of View from Matrix Care. We have a lot of guests and topics coming up that you won't want to miss, so be sure to subscribe. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, and if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss, leave us a review. To learn more about Matrix Care and our solutions and services, visit matrixcare.com. You can also follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you for listening. Be well, and we'll see you next time.